We are at a point of generational change in the neighborhood. The oldest residents are fewer and fewer. There's hardly a house left that hasn't had some significant renovation done to its outside and or inside. And some of the houses are even being taken down to be replaced by bigger houses. I don't really have a problem with that. That's how neighborhoods go. That is part of the story. But what we have now and how we got here has not been documented. Time for an update on the Oak Ridge Acres Movie Project. I'm Scott Simpson, the amateur filmmaker and your neighbor from here in Oak Ridge Acres in London, Ontario, Canada. I'm going to tell you uh, a lot about what's been going on and not going on with uh, the movie development and give you probably the first big comprehensive overview I've done about this project, where it's at, uh, and where I hope to take it, and how you can be involved. Uh, first thing I can tell you is if you follow along at oakridgemovie.ca, you'll find that there's not a lot there actually, so. Let's talk about the purpose and the goals of the documentary. It's the story of what the developers called Canada's first planned community. The developers in question were Sifton. They're still around, they're thriving. They have built some amazing stuff just in the past few years, but their keystone claim to fame was Canada's first planned community, which is this, Oak Ridge Acres, a part of London Township that wasn't part of the city of London when it was developed in the 1950s out of 74 acres of farmland. So this is where we live now. How did it come to be what it is? How did the development happen? What inspired it? What was going on historically at the time that made all these streets and houses and infrastructure being built at once with places for people to shop and worship and park and play but how did it happen here in London? How did it end up here, here? What was here before here was here? I wanna use computer graphics and Justin Skripnik has offered help and he does some amazing drone stuff. So I think between computer graphics and old maps and drones, we can do some spectacular stuff. It's supposed to be a very human story and that's really the wild card in developing the idea so far is that I know the thing that's going to make it appealing to anybody but the people who live here is the human story. Is it going to be the story of the Siftons? Is it going to be the story of how the community came together when there were challenges that need to be addressed? Is it going to be the story of uh, some people who were the first ones here and influenced how everybody else did their thing? The stories of the people are the stories that I don't know. At this point, I don't know what I don't know. But what I do know has been interesting. The more I do research on Oak Ridge Acres, the more stuff I find that surprises me sometimes that I didn't know, that I hadn't expected. But as I find more and more and more stuff, it just piles up in my head and it hasn't been turned into a script or even a treatment. So when it comes time to look at more advanced subjects about the filmmaking, I get a little stuck. So I want to end up producing probably about a 90 minute feature length uh, documentary showing the development of Oak Ridge Acres, the people who lived here, what made it special, and its historic context in urban living, really because originally this wasn't part of the city. That, that was half the point, is that you had to drive out of the city to get to the country where you would have some of the amenities of city living, but in a little bit more room to stretch. So through on-camera interviews, maps, historic photos, historic film, if people can find some in their basement, documents, and a lot of interviews with the people who were there for it, the people whose voices and faces can communicate what happened here. I want that to be what drives it, um, but I don't want it to be a lot of talking heads and today's editing style is a bit more fast paced. So that's the main project and it will generate enough stuff that I think there can be many side projects, little video essays, about particular subjects that couldn't be fully fleshed out in the main feature. 
I imagine uh, an online portal where people can upload their photos of Oak Ridge Acres, their old home movies, documents, pictures, posters, postcards, brochures, pamphlets, uh, schedules, things that are going to end up one day thrown away, but somebody one day will, will say, I wish we'd save that. Let's scan it. Let's all put it in one database that somebody can in the future sit down and browse and go, that's our house. That's what our house looked like in 1962. Holy cow, look at all the one-story homes here, because there's a lot of two-story homes. I'm just imagining 20 years, 30 years in the future. So you might wonder who I am. Uh, my name's Scott. I'm Scott Simpson. I spent most of my career in broadcasting, uh, mostly in radio, though. I went to school for radio and television. That was in the early 90s, though, and I did specialize in documentary film production, but that was a long time ago and I haven't made big documentaries since. Having said all that, there is a whole lot about this that made me think I could do it all myself. The scale of it though, I can't do all myself. I have done some remarkable things in my life, but right now is a time of a struggle, if, if I'm honest, and I do wanna be honest and vulnerable in this process. Um, I moved here to London from Halifax, Nova Scotia in 2014 with uh, my young son and my wife, Amanda. Amanda died two years later of ovarian cancer. Um, and a few years after that, my career just, just was not working out for me anymore. What I saw myself doing after that was telling people stories on video, kind of like this. I wanted to start a personal history business, the documenting interviews of people for their families, because we all die eventually, and we don't want to be forgotten. And there's people we don't want to forget. And uh, I just know that when we find a single black and white photograph of a loved one that we haven't seen before, that's super precious. We really appreciate having that. And I thought the idea of having a long, uh, you know, augmented with pictures and videos and stuff, a story of your loved one that you could keep and pass down through the generations would be something a lot of people would want to have. But I couldn't get it off the ground. I was struggling and struggling and struggling to make it go. I ended up starting to capture people's old video cassettes onto uh, digital. And I still do that. If you need old videotapes turned to digital, Scott's your guy. Um, but I was still struggling to make things go in my life. And eventually I figured out I'm autistic and I have ADHD, which if you know a lot about that, and know what it means, then you know, you understand already. If you don't know what that means and what any of it has to do with making this movie, stay tuned, I will be explaining it along the way, probably more in, separate videos, but for now, just understand that my challenges lie in um, planning and executing things in the future. I'm really good at the now, I'm really good at the middle of things, but starting and completing is hard for me, and uh, organizing things that are supposed to happen in the future is difficult for me. So that's one reason why I'm going to be asking for a lot of help, a lot of people uh, to get involved in this, because I, I have some deficits, uh, especially also in, in social things. Not just the organizing part, I do have trouble remembering to get back to people, but social things in general, I struggle with. I'm not a people person, I like communicating, I like to talk, I love to listen. Put in a situation, I can interview people just great, but just the things that maintain friendships and relationships and, and that sort of thing, I've never been good at. Now I understand why. So please be patient with me if you see me out and about and you say hi and I act all like awkward and stuff. I honestly don't know what to do a lot of the times. Right, so why am I making a movie? Well, we moved here in 2014 and set about renovating the basement. And the night they laid down the carpet, 
And the night we were talking about how to renovate the kitchen, which needed renovating, there was one of those huge summer rainstorms and the basement flooded. And it was really upsetting. And honestly, 10 years later, the kitchen never got done because we had to spend that money digging up the outside and putting the weeping tile down and all that. But as it was going on, as we were dealing with all this, somebody said, well, you know, uh, there used to be a creek running through here. Went looking to see if that was true. Long story short, I got really curious about what was here before here was here. The most interesting history to me has always been local history. Stuff that you can see or see remnants of having been here. And uh, the more I dug into our neighborhood, the more interesting stuff I found. And I'm a super curious guy. The philosophy that runs under all this is that what gets recorded can be remembered. Not everything that gets recorded ends up remembered. We lose a lot of stuff. But once we lose it, it's gone. So preserve it now so somebody can enjoy it later. So what's been happening in recent months? Uh, I put a couple videos up on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. People loved them. It was great. It was so nice. I had people, I had my kids, friends at school going, are you the guy who did the video? And I said, yeah, that's me. So that's kind of fun. But again, I, I did a couple of them and I shot one more and I scripted yet another, but stuff happens, stuff gets in the way. And then once the momentum stops for something, I have a hard time rolling it forward. So I'm putting this out today as my next push of that boulder. I was on CBC Radio Morning. Feels like a few weeks ago, but it was probably a couple months ago by now. They did a great interview by phone. Uh, I got to talk about the project, and I think we got a couple contacts out of that. Uh, I've been making a couple of other contacts. Somebody popped up from a few years ago when I was talking about the family history business, and she's made a, a video with her mother, which is really cool, and she's interested in the filmmaking process, and she's gung-ho, and uh, her enthusiasm alone is going to be uh, very welcome. Justin Skripnik got in touch. You see his drone videos online, and they are incredible. I'm really looking forward to working with him because just his pictures are so beautiful. As I said, I'm not great at the start and I'm not good at the end. The middle is where I'm strong at, but we need a good start for this project with a few things that have to be in place. I need some collaborators. I need at least another brain or two to bounce some ideas off of to remind me that uh, time is real, money is real, people need to be places, blah, blah, blah. Uh, to help organize the thoughts that are all just like fluttering in my head right now. If anyone has experience in actually producing a film, please come be my friend. Cause I, I'm kind of winging the actual doing of it. The ideas are here, the research is there. It's the actual getting people to talk to people in a place with a camera going that is the hard part for me. Films cost money somehow. Uh, all of this has been self-funded so far. It's just, I, I bought the camera, I bought the mics, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's all been on my time. It's all been on my dollars so far. I don't know how far I can go with that. I can do it on the cheap. I don't know if I can do it on the free. But if I'm going to be doing it full on, AAA the right way, or at least something better than just me doing it on my say-so, then there's going to need to be a budget and there's going to be need to be lawyers. Because even if I go and talk to the man across the street, if I want to put it in a movie, he's got to sign something that says, I know I was recorded on camera and I authorize you to use my likeness and my words synchronized together in a film. I need a lawyer to, you know, write that in lawyer speak so that it can be used. And if I need permits and insurance and things, the businessy side of the filmmaking, if you know about that stuff, please uh, get in touch. I have been pretty crap at getting back to people, and I know that's my way, but I know that way won't be acceptable. So I'm starting a spreadsheet of nice people who've been in touch so I can get in touch with them. There's also the mailing list. You can sign up to at the website, uh, which is oakridgemovie.ca. I have an email address. There's an Instagram address at Oak Ridge Movie. 
there's Facebook, and I'm just me on Facebook. I don't have a page for this. If you're a social media expert, I could use a collaborator on that. Somebody did reach out and say social media is their specialty, and I don't think I wrote down who they were. Ah. Um, somebody who can put a little bit of discipline into getting me to write things for the email list, for the website, Instagram feed. So I probably will make another video articulating all the different peoples and skills that I'm trying to draft into this project. I need people people, the kind of people who you talk to and say, oh, I know who you should talk to, or I just saw that guy the other day, or you know who has a lot of pictures in his basement. Yes, we need a few people for shooting time, whenever that ends up being, to unload the stuff, take it into somebody's house and set it up and aim the lights and get the sound going and maybe hold a microphone or look at this. It's gonna take a few people. I thought I could do all that myself, but I'm old and creaky now. My joints hurt and I get right sweaty when I start carrying tripods into people's house. So in the in interest of everybody's comfort and doing a good job, if I can find a few people who have experience in movie making or photography or sound, that'll be cool too. And as much as I love editing, as much as I adore the process of editing, I think when it comes down to doing the actual edit and treatment of colors and video graphics and things of that sort, I'm gonna want somebody who was raised in the digital era. I'm an analog guy. I learned all my skills on videotape and audio tape. Most of them transferred, yeah, but people who've been raised with a graphic design knowledge that is like layers of digital stuff, they think differently. And I want that kind of vision to take uh, what could be just a bunch of old people talking to the camera into something that uh, is compelling and will stand up visually over time. Why do this? Why would I even bother other than just to entertain myself? Because I've got my personal reasons for wanting to do this project. Why should anybody else care? Because it hasn't been done. The developers have told a version of the Oak Ridge Acres story through the years, and I'm not saying anything about their version isn't true. Every word of it could be true, but it's not everything. It doesn't tell the story of the people. It doesn't tell the story of the things that the uh, early residents went through. It doesn't address the history of what this really was before it was houses. And frankly, before it was farmland. We want to go all the way back, as far as we possibly can. It's still a fascinating story even with the rough spots, or possibly even because of the rough spots. We are at a point of generational change in the neighborhood. The oldest residents are fewer and fewer. There's hardly a house left that hasn't had some significant renovation done to its outside and or inside. And some of the houses are even being taken down to be replaced by bigger houses. I don't really have a problem with that. That's how neighborhoods go. That is part of the story. But what we have now and how we got here has not been documented. Why do a video and not a book? I'm a video guy. The stuff that is generated from this project would be enough material for someone to make a book. That reminds me, there was a, somebody who got in touch, I think is in the building business, and his father was in the home building business, and his father's home building company built a bunch of homes in this city, and he completed a book documenting, I think, all of the houses that got built. I mean, that's not the same as what I want to do, but it's in the same family. It kind of rhymes. So I want to talk to that guy about how he did what he did and how he kept it all moving forward. Oak Ridge Acres was built outside of the city. This was London Township. This was rural. Now the city has grown all around us. We are surrounded by city. Should we become part of the city? Should more traffic be going through here? Should more retail be built in here? How do we rationalize having streets that are roads or roads that are streets? I forget which one it is, but there was a great video on YouTube talking about strodes, how there are different kinds of roads and streets that serve a city and Oxford Street, 
was uh, used as an illustration internationally of how just uh, it's supposed to be a street, but it's just got, it's got so many lanes and you can't. The Strode fails at being a street. There are many driveways to businesses and homes like you'd find on a street, but mixed with multiple highway sized lanes. The signs are large and meant to be read while driving, which feels really out of scale if you're walking there. But these environments are ugly anyway. Nobody cares about these places and nobody wants to spend any time here. Cities in the US and Canada are covered in terrible non-places like this. Places you go because you have to, not because you want to. Nobody actually sits and watches the world go by on this bench. Anyway, we're surrounded by city, we're surrounded by traffic. What becomes of this neighborhood in the future? And should a place like this ever be built again? Big lots, single story homes. A lot of people want to live here for very good reasons. And there are probably also very good reasons why this kind of place can't be repeated again. Which might make you wonder, why haven't I finished it so far? I've been working on this for years, off and on, more off than on. As I mentioned earlier, the ADHD that comes with whatever flavor of autism I have has gotten in the way of a lot. I am struggling most days to get my work work done, and even that doesn't quite make ends meet. So I've got life challenges, I've got functional challenges uh, in terms of turning my strong intent and passion into actual work. So this is why I'm here being vulnerable, trying to open up the project so it can actually get done. I wanted to do it all myself as a way to give back to the community. I'm not the kind of guy who waves at everybody and stops and chats on the street with people and mingles at the supermarket with folks. I've always felt kind of outside society. And if I can't be part of the community in a traditional sense because it's not in me, I don't have the skills, then I at least want to give back to the community. The folks in this neighborhood, they didn't know they were, maybe, but they've been wonderful. They've been supportive. Anything I've ever asked of anybody, and I try to almost ask for nothing ever, um, people have been very kind. People have been very kind, especially when Amanda was sick. So, um, I guess what I want to give back is the, the work. I want to turn my curiosity and passion into something that will benefit the community forever while acknowledging that I am missing some of the tools necessary to pull it off. So to me, it feels like a fitting exercise to to let myself reach out and say, can you help me with this? I wanna do this thing. Do you wanna see this movie? Can you help? And I guess it reminds me that this costs money, right? Movies cost money to make. Good movies cost a lot of money to make. So who's paying for this? I don't know, I've gone in circles in my head about this. I'd love to be paid to do this, but oh my God, would that not put so much responsibility on myself to make it work? And I don't know how to balance that. Like one reason that I enjoyed it being just my project is that there's nobody to say, why isn't it done yet? This doesn't look good enough. You need to go back and redo this. I don't understand your story. Is that I could just do it all and say, here, I made this. If I let other people in, it's still people, right? So I don't know how to deal with that. And if there are people who are expecting to be paid, I don't know how to deal with that either. So that would take accountants and management type people. And I'm just better at making the movie. The biggest obvious idea would be to go to Sifton, the developers, and say, hey, can you bankroll this movie about your greatest achievement? But I don't know. I don't know. They might say, go cram it with walnuts. They might say, here's a big check. Each of those brings issues. Anyway, uh, I have to run. Some people are arriving. 
Thank you so much for watching this. Please join me at uh, oakridgemovie.ca. Follow on Instagram at oakridgemovie. Watch for more videos. I I'll keep doing this. I, I hate having to chat and run, but there's folks here and I've got all my movie making crap everywhere. Thank you. Thank you.